Hi, this is Freddie Spencer coming to you after the 2018 French Grand Prix at Le Mans. Now, first I want to talk about is what it was like for me the first time I went to Le Mans while leading the World Championship in 1983. I had talked about it last year actually in the broadcast about what it was like that first lap in practice and then I, I didn't, as I came over uh, the Dunlop Bridge uh, rise going into what is basically the first right-hander, even though the Dunlop, the, the sweeper leading into what is now the chicane, used to be we used to go straight over the hill. There was no chicane. And I went straight and realized, of course, that I'd made a mistake and turned around because we were racing the Bugatti circuit. But that first weekend that I raced, I raced in Le Mans, it was also pretty pretty interesting because of the weather conditions and we raced in in April then and it was it was pretty cold in fact um, it was the weekend that that Irv and I figured out put some medical gloves under the leathers under the leather gloves and it keeps the hands warm and the hands warm and same thing with the feet it certainly keeps your body warm and it would well, it definitely helped me to to win the race and that weekend Kenny struggled had some mechanical problems with his bike but it was Honda got first second and third position so Hondas have always gone pretty pretty good at at uh, the Le Mans circuit um, I know in recent years it's been really as they talked about in the broadcast Jorge Lorenzo who's been pretty much a dominant force there he's, I think he's won like five times at the French or the French Grand Prix five times at Le Mans so he certainly knows that racetrack and I can understand why the Yamaha would be strong there uh, in its present configuration because it is known as a bike that normally except what they're struggling with now of uh, rear wheel spin normally with the uh, Big Bang engine or the uh, cross plane engine basically is what it is cross plane it gets pretty good traction normally and good throttle control and things but they're struggling still looks like the factory right riders are struggling with electronics getting that figured out as Valentino Rossi has talked about and certainly you can see that in the inconsistency of Maverick Vinales but the other Yamaha team the Tech 3 team uh, with the young rider from Malaysia doing very well uh, over the weekend he showed that he has a good chance of being the top rookie for the year over Franco Morbidelli on the VDS Honda and that is going to be saying something if he's able to pull that out but he has certainly had a good race he's he's a lot more talented I think than people realize and maybe that's what Hervé saw in him as an ex-racer himself so um, it'd be interesting interesting to see what happens with the Tech 3 team now they're moving to KTM there's a lot of talk and I know it's certainly interesting here in Great Britain what's going to happen with Bradley Smith and he shows moments and laps of promise uh, that things maybe are going to turn around during the race weekend during practice um, he seems to have moments where it, it seems like that he's, he's getting it figured out but I'm not sure if it's a confidence issue um, or, or exactly what is what is happening with him there's been a lot of speculation about the fact that the change to Michelin tires has not been a good thing for Bradley Smith but we'll have to see what he can do over these next few races Hervé seems to be a little bit or seems to have some patience on choosing who they feel is wants to be that second rider when they make that transition to KTM for next year they want to keep the Malaysian rider and certainly there's that second spot that is open for Bradley if he's able to pick up the pace now Cal Crutchlow what an interesting weekend for Cal you know we've talked about he's had a couple of weekends in a row he's had crashes going into this weekend at Le Mans uh, was it going to be three in a row and he did have some crashes in practice I, I remember looking at before uh, qualifying started on Saturday I was watching and watching him move around you could see that he was seemed a little bit slow in his movements a little bit banged up from the prior two I believe it was two practice crashes he had so far and then that massive crash um, in qualifying one where he high sided which is the worst thing that as a rider you want to have happen because you just you're at the mercy of how hard it 
uh, how high it throws you and how you hit the ground. In fact, he spent the night in the hospital. They woke up Sunday morning and weren't sure if he's going to be able to ride. He had a little bit of blood in his lungs, from what I understand, but he is tough as nails, and he was able to get out there and, and do a pretty decent job, and which I don't think surprised anybody uh, with his toughness that he has. So he got out there. It's certainly a good, good ride, but it shows just how hard he's pushing to be able to, to run up front, and, and we'll see. But it looked like Maybe it was going to be three races in a row, he didn't score points, but he was able to hang in there and do a good job. Now let's talk about the main teams. Let's talk about what was the expectation with Jorge Lorenzo this weekend. There's a lot of pressure on Jorge, especially going into certain circuits where he is known to do well. Tracks that um, seem to favor him for whatever reason. And if he cannot get the job done on those circuits, it's certainly going to be hard when he gets to the other ones, maybe ones that he doesn't feel as comfortable on. So he was able to, it looked like in qualifying, he was right up there for, for certainly for a while. Uh, Dovey doing the job that he wants to do, what he can do. In fact, in Dovey's case, obviously signing the new two-year contract. Be interesting to know how much that was because before he was getting one around about a million dollars, a million, two million dollars. You wonder if maybe it's been doubled or or maybe even tripled. Uh, I'd probably hold out for for two or three times, at least maybe three times more. But in in today's world, I know they still get some money, you know, support um, outside of Ducati, you know, from their sponsors and things that that certainly can help with that. Um, but he got that out of the way, so at least that's that's done and dusted. So he should be ready for for the season. One thing he couldn't afford for his championship hopes certainly was two weekends in a row of not scoring points after that unfortunate qu crash he had with Jorge and Danny Petrosa at the last race in Jerez. So going into the race, he had a good qualifying position. Uh, the top qualifying spots were taken by one Johan Zarco, I mean in front of his home crowd. Um, it couldn't have been better, and that lap he put in was, was pretty spectacular. Uh, the track has changed over the years. Back when I raced on it, it was certainly it was definitely bumpier. Um, they've changed a little bit in the back part now. It's a chicane. There's not the kink that leads into that final right left before the rights, the double right coming on the front straightaway. It used to be just uh, sh straight away with the left kink. Now there's chicane there. But overall, the track hasn't changed that much. Um, on the front straightaway, obviously, as I mentioned a while ago, there's the chicane they put in. Um, instead of just going straight over the rise, over the, the crest, and then into the bottom. And the right hander down at the bottom, there's chicane there now. So, But basically the track, like I said, you know, other than those couple chicanes, it's, it's pretty similar. It's pretty tight, actually, for, I would imagine, certainly, even in my day, uh, with the 500s, it was, it was not a, a high speed circuit by any means. Um, and so it, it really challenged you to to not be too aggressive, um, which I think is one reason why Hori does a good job there. And back in those days, it was bumpy and a little bit slippery. Now, surface certainly a lot better, and grip level and, and, and safety-wise. So, Johan Zarco putting in that, that great lap to get the pole position, exactly what the French fans could hope for, and certainly probably even improve the crowd uh, attendance uh, even more so on Sunday. Uh, so very high expectation. Last time a French rider had been on the pole was in 1988, which was Christian Saran at the French Grand Prix at Paul Ricard. So it's been a long time, 30 years. Uh, and so the French fans were waiting a long time for that. Mark Marquez, another great weekend as far as, as getting the job done. Um, consistent laps in practice, which is what I always look at and his ability to be able to just string those laps together, consistent laps, quicker than anyone else uh, in, the, in the minute 32s, uh, minute 33s that he was running. And so the Honda seems to be working in all tracks, and that certainly, as I've said before, doesn't bode well for everyone else. So he was in second position. But really a really good run from Daniel Petrucci, who came through qualifying one. I watched... Watched him put in that lap then, and then what was impressive is his ability to step it up again after he made it into to Q2. 
and get on the front row. He is letting Ducati know that if some, for some reason, if they don't re-sign Jorge, who may go to Suzuki, that's what the rumors are, which might be a bike that would fit him pretty, pretty good. Uh, if he goes there, then he should be up for that job. Both Primark riders, uh, there, there's rumors. Not only Daniel, but also Jack Miller, who has been consistently quicker, obviously, um, every single race so far, finishing the top 10 on the Primark Ducati bike seems to be able to suit him. And he just seems more comfortable. You know, it's great to see with the struggle coming directly from Moto3 and to be able to, to certainly improve and, and get the job done. His one race win at Assen in those tricky conditions, but now he seems to be running the pace he needs to, and, and he did a great job in the race to, to kind of hold the, hold the position for him. So you had the front row fixed, and, and then Valentino Rossi and the struggles of Maverick Vinali uh, still continuing. It sets up for a pretty interesting race to see what happens. I think everybody was maybe hoping that Johan could get that first win on his home soil in front of his home crowd. Certainly something I'm sure Dornan was looking forward to and the media wanted. But as the race began, um, you saw the patience of Mark Marquez, which was very impressive. And, you know, he just is coming to his own with that. And, and I think, you know, everybody talks about the crashes that he's doing in practice. We know that he has the process of going and pushing and pushing and pushing. I, I made the comment this weekend. I was doing the show in Petersburg, and, and Dave Aldana was there. And Dave Aldana was one of those riders who years ago, 30 years ago, he said on any Sunday and a couple other times that he pushes till he crashes and backs off a little bit. And that's certainly what Mark Marquez does. But he crashes when it doesn't count, you know, in the race. He really gets focused and like he can, and he just runs his own pace. And he did a great job of that on Sunday. And you could see just he had the comfort. He picked his way through uh, the pack. He waited for the mistake that Dovey made first, which was surprising uh, with his crash. And then you know, just a few laps later, Johan Zarco went ran a little bit wide. You could see that, and and that's where a rider has to make the choice: do I run off the track, do I run wide, or do I try to make the corner? And Johan tried to hold his line. You could see, and he and he crashed. He was out of the race to the disappointment of the thousands of fans at the French Grand Prix. And so Mark was able to to get the job done. Uh, Petrucci, who was second, Valentino ran a great race in third position to get that done, and Jack Miller was there. And, you, and Jorge was there, and then he just started to fade. And he mentioned even after the race, and it's interesting to kind of see, he mentions about he, he has trouble staying focused. He also gets a little bit tired. The bike, the Ducati, is, is a difficult motorcycle for him to ride. So doesn't look very promising that things are going to improve for him uh, as we go in this year. But Mark Marquez certainly it looks like he has things under control. It is interesting to see what happens next race. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too.